what's going on, everybody? Back for another edition of TPS TV. And uh, no review this week, so I did a little bit of a countdown instead. I am a huge fan of the Conjuring verse. Conjuring verse. Because I shouldn't put a huge hyphen in the middle there. All one word. Uh, you know, the Conjuring, the Annabelle trilogy, and then of course it extends out to the Nun and uh, the Curse of. Oh, I'm gonna butcher this. The Curse of uh, La Lenorna, La, La Lorna, that one. Uh, films, and I mean, you know, say what you want about any of them. Some people, you know, they're, it, it, you know, does divide some fans out there. I, for one, really like these films. Uh, I'm not big on the supernatural ghost movies, but these are kind of like my exceptions to the rules. And uh, anyway, I thought, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do. Let's rank them. Let's do, and I think there's, what is there, two, five, seven? There is seven films in the Conjuring verse. Eight soon, because Conjuring 3 is uh, filming right now. So, uh, so here we go. Let's bust it out right here. Top seven, in order, ranked uh, Conjuring verse films. At number seven, I have to go Annabelle. Um... Uh, Annabelle gets a lot of hate. People just shit all over it. I mean, it made decent money. People, everybody wanted to see what it was all about. But then when, when they watched it, people thought it was kind of weak sauce. I'll be the first to admit, the movie itself isn't the greatest. I still liked it. I thought it had some really strong moments. It really was one of those movies where, like, all the great moments in the trailer, <laughs> that was kind of it. Uh, and it had some really good moments in the trailer. Uh, the one thing I remember about that movie... That stands out the most is the scene in the elevator when it rides down to the basement of this apartment complex. I remember that being one of the like freakiest, scariest scenes, but there's no payoff to it. Like it builds up. I'm like, oh man, this is gonna be a crazy jump scare, and then like nothing happens. And I remember thinking like, huh, shit. Uh, we watched this in theaters, and uh, I will say I walked out of there giving it one of these. You know, it's a, it's a thumbs up. It's kind of in the middle there. It's wiggling around. Um, once again. I get people's complaints about this film. Uh, I think for me, the, 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 the biggest downside was, I mean, aside from it just not being that scary in general, it just turned into a weird, like, thriller. Like, it went from being like this supernatural ghost creepy doll movie, and then at the end, it just felt like they were like racing against time, trying to, you know, stop this, you know, one woman. It's just like, I, I, I don't know. I, I really kind of just, uh, from it. Uh, so, yeah, I ranked that number seven. Uh, number six... I'll have to go with uh, The Nun. Uh, now, I really, from here on out, I will say, I like the rest of these movies. Like, the Annabelle is kind of in the middle. The rest of them are up in this area to this. You know, it's a uh, good thumbs up for the rest of these movies. I know a lot of people uh, hate on them. I liked it. Uh, the Nun, thought it was really good, really creepy. The atmosphere, I really love. And I'm not just saying this because it's part of a shared, you know, universe. But it had, a, like, a, like, a universal horror vibe to it. Uh, just the, um... You know, walk around in these creepy graveyards, and I mean, it was just chock full of this insane atmosphere, and I really dug it. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go with the nun. Uh, I will admit, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot wrong with the nun, <laughs> uh, especially the final battle, and he, you know, they pull out the holy water. No, blood of Christ is what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. The fucking blood of Christ, because you know that's a thing, and. Um, like, where'd that come from at the end there? And that bow, she's having to reach in the water. Like, oh, yeah, I've had it the whole time. And, you know, uh, still, yeah, like I said, I, I really liked it just for the atmosphere. And I love the girl. What's her name? Tessa Fl Flaminga? Is that how you pronounce that? Whatever. I like that girl. So, uh, yeah, thumbs up there. Uh, and, I mean, I, if people bitched about the whole connection to the, you know, Conjuring. But I'm just like, who cares? Like, we knew. Like, did they need it? Probably not, because we already knew this was a connection. You know, it, it's the nun. So you don't really need any extra scenes like, hey, it's connected. But I was okay with that. I didn't cry as much as everybody else did about it. So I, I dug it. Uh, where are we at? Number five, The Curse of La Lenora. Lenona. I, I, don't, I can never say that right. I've heard it a million times. I'm, I'm still just going to butcher it. Um, I like this movie. Uh, this is like the, the spinoff cousin, I guess. Because like, all the other movies were like directly like from, you know, Annabelle doll was from The Conjuring. Like, they actually had the doll in there. Uh, the nun was the villain in, you know, 2 or whatever. Uh, Valak, if you will. This one was literally just kind of like, they had no previous connection to it. Uh, except for one scene that kind of ties in. It's not even an object or anything like that. It's just a priest from an... So it's kind of a spinoff from a spinoff. 
because this is the priest that, um, you know, was with the Annabelle doll from the Annabelle series is also in this then. Um, what I really liked about this movie, story-wise, very generic, very just straightforward, you know, it is, it kind of has the vibe of just another Conjuring Light kind of vibe, uh, just another James Wan produced spooky ghost movie. Um, but what I love about it was, I just love when the family's kind of trapped in the house and, you know, the crying woman's spirit is just like flying around. I like the, it's, it turns out like a siege kind of film where now it's like they're trying to protect themselves against it. Uh, the scene where she's trying to drown one of the kids and the priest blesses the swimming pool. Like the, the woman's like, the ghost woman's like holding down. No one is the mother in the water, and it's like, you're drowning her, and the priest is there, and I remember sitting there just going like, just bless the, the pool, like, wouldn't that work perfectly? And he does, like, he heard me, he's just like, oh yeah, and he blesses the water and just zaps her. Fucking awesome. Like, I, I, I maintain this, like, that should just be a staple now in every exorcism type movie from here on out. The priest should just bring a kiddie pool with him. Fill that bitch with water, bless it. And then when you start performing that exorcism, just pick up the kid and like powerbomb him right to that swimming pool. Boom. Demon out. Demon out. It'll work. Trust me. From here on out, there should never be any exorcist movie that the exorcism takes like 30 minutes. No, no. Fuck that. The third, the whole third, last third act is like a whole exorcism. No, no. We ain't doing that. Literally, it's going to be a three minute scene. Power on the kid into the pool, it's over. Uh, but no, I really, I, I dug this movie. Once again, this one had a couple little flaws. Like I said, the fact that the crying woman was not just ghosting through the walls, like they were using doors and shit. But it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know, I have a good time watching these films, so I'm willing to kind of let some shit slide. And that's, that's just one I'm I let slide, so. Number four, we're going to go with Annabelle Creation. When they announced they were doing a second Annabelle movie and it was going to be a prequel to the first one, I was on board because I'm all, I'm all about horror films anyways. Uh, you know, we got two new Halloween movies coming out. I personally did not care for the Halloween 2018 version. I just didn't like the story. That's just me. But when they announced they're doing two more and they're going to be connected to that one, I'm still pumped. Like, I'm like, yeah, bring them on. Like, I, 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 that's the one thing I, I, I kind of missed out on. Like, we have that slightly today. Like with, you know, when the Saw movies came out and the Paranormal Activity movie, like, you know, every year a new one came out. Like, but in the 80s, it was just like insane. It was just like every year you was getting a Halloween or a Friday the 13th or a Nightmare on Elm Street. Like the golden age. And I mean, that's just, people took that shit for granted. Like, we don't have that today. So, like, yeah, I think that's another thing I love with these Conjuring movies. It's like, literally, it is like, you know, we got a new one coming every year and I, I, I freaking love it. Um, so when they said this is in a pre or a prequel, once again, even though I was like Annabelle... I liked it, but it was, you know, one of these things. I was still pumped. I was like, I'll, I'll still want to check it out and everything else. And this is way, it was way better than it probably deserved to be. And really kind of surprised me more than anything else. Not just that, but with the Annabelle movie, you thought that was how the Annabelle doll came to be. And I remember thinking, like, they're going to do a prequel. Like, they already showed how the Annabelle doll, like, came, you know, uh, to be, be this, you know, demon spirit, whatever. And it's like, oh, no, no, there's a whole other story before that. The fact that they do a little nink and, or a wink and nudge to the nun as well. You know, you see the picture with Valak, and it's just like, oh, that's fucking awesome. Um, no, I, I really dug it. Uh, really creepy stuff. Once again, uh, say what you want about these movies. Like I said, I, I'm usually a guy, I will admit, I don't like jump scares for the sake of jump scares, which a lot of these movies do kind of crank up. They're just like, fuck it, jump scares out the wazoo. Uh, they're pretty effective, nonetheless. Like, I, I still jump in the theater, and I like that, you know? So it's just like, these are just fun... These are like the blockbuster horror films. These are the mainstream, roller coaster ride horror films, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, as long as you're having fun watching them, that's all it's all about. Uh, yeah, Annabelle Creation, number four, really dug it. Uh, number three came out just a few weeks ago, Annabelle Comes Home. And uh, I won't go into too much detail, because once again, I did a review on this channel, so you can go check it out. Uh, but I love this one. One of my favorite kinds of movies. I kind of mentioned it earlier with the uh, Curse of La Lenora. La Laura. It doesn't like it matters. Uh, the Crying Woman. I'm going to around the Crying Woman. Fuck it. Um, one of my th favorite things about horror films is is like siege films. When people are trapped in a, in, a, in a isolated location and they're surrounded by something. Whether it's Night of the Living Dead. 
uh, with zombies on the outside of this farmhouse, or Prince of Darkness with the possessed homeless people uh, outside this church. Uh, I like that. I don't know. There's something about you know making that last stand, trying to survive. You know, Dawn of the Dead. You're in the mall. Same thing. I love that kind of thing. And this movie takes place in this house, and it's you know these three young women. Uh, there's a young guy as well who doesn't quite get in the house. He's kind of having his own side adventure outside. But I like that aspect of it for one. But then two, it was like this is a movie they were literally just like, listen, we're killing it with these movies. Like we're making tons of money. Like, way more money than there needs to be. We have, let's just keep doing spinoffs. Make a movie where there's like a million ghosts. Like, just keep creating wacky, side, crazy characters. Put them all in one movie. And then when we get, start running ideas, we'll just reach back into the bag and pull out one of these side characters. And that's what I love about this one. There was like, literally just a million crazy little ghosts to the side. From like, the samurai ghost to, you know, this werewolf creature thing. It's like a werewolf ghost. Like, I don't know how it works, but... Fuck it. I, if it, they do a spinoff for it, I'll be there. I'll check it out. Uh, just love the overabundance of characters in this one. And like I said, it just it retained that Conjuring vibe. Just really spooky atmosphere. And I mean, we had the Warrens. I mean, it was uh, they were only in it for the very beginning, but it really did kind of add quite a bit to it. You know, we get to see Lorraine struggle with this gift a little bit. You know, once again, we kind of already dealt that with the Conjuring films, but it's just kind of neat to kind of see that continue, that arc keep going. Uh, so yeah, no, I really dug it. I thought it was a really good movie. Uh, big thumbs up for that. Uh, number two, I mean, at this point, we've already went through all the spinoffs. It's time to get to the regular series. So, I mean, naturally, Conjuring 2, uh, just fucking awesome. Uh, Conjuring and Insidious movies are two of my, you know, favorite uh, in the world of, like, supernatural ghost movies. Uh, for the most part, I just don't find them scary. But somehow, James Wan was able to, like, bust them out and make them scary terrifying again and uh with Conjuring 2 it was just you know more of the same but it was just really good stuff uh, I was unfamiliar with this uh storyline uh, altogether this was like the British version of the Amityville horror like Amityville is a very infamous uh ghost story here so we get that over you know th their version of it uh and I really dug it and once again we got the uh Valak out of it and we got the Crooked Man which we're supposed to be getting that movie anytime, and for whatever reason, it seems like it kind of cooled on that, but, uh, throw it at us. I'm ready for it. Uh, but yeah, this, this spooky, spooky stuff. And number one, come on, come on, Conjuring, Conjuring, ah, oh, love The Conjuring. Um, once again, uh, I remember when it came out, thinking, like, we just had Insidious, like, really? We're going to go to the well again, another spooky ghost movie with Patrick Wilson in it? Whatever. And then I watched it, and I was like, holy shit. That's how they got me. Insidious and Conjuring both was just kind of like, I just like, I don't care for ghost movies. I don't find them that scary. So, like, literally each time, I'm just kind of like, eh, I'm not going to watch this. I'm not going to waste my time with this. And then I watched it, like, holy shit. Like, they actually made ghosts scary. Damn. Uh, yeah, Conjuring just, you know, just really, really awesome. Really good stuff. So, uh, that's, that's it. That's, that's, uh, me ranking all seven Conjuring verse films. What do you guys think? Put that shit in the comment section down below. Give me your thoughts of the franchise. If you're a fan, if you're not a fan, if you really just like these movies suck and I hate them, tell me why. Let me know down there. I mean, give me a good reason too. Like, I don't, you know, don't just be like, damn, it sucks. And then that's, that's it. Like, tell me what you don't like about it, you know? Believe me, we're all, you know, hey, that's what makes the horror community great. We all have our own opinions. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you for watching. And, uh, yeah, uh, actually coming up soon, we'll kind of get to some TPS news right now. Uh, we actually got a new show coming out that's going to be uh, airing in two weeks, I think. Uh, me and Simon were huge, uh, aside from just being uh, horror movie fans, we're a huge pro wrestling fan. I, I should say old school pro wrestling. Like, I don't watch the current shit. I Sorry, just don't. Uh, but we do love the old stuff. And so what better way to uh, kind of merge pro wrestling and horror together than do our new show, Journey Through the Dark Side, where me and Simon will kind of take a retroactive or a retrospective look at all of The Undertaker's pro wrestling matches. We're going to start at the beginning and work our way through. And, uh, yeah, each week we'll be bringing you a different match and kind of break it down, analyze it, give you our thoughts and everything else about it. So if you're a fan of pro wrestling or just a fan of The Undertaker in general or just want to listen to a couple guys run their mouth about something, that, there you go. Either way, tune in. Uh, like I said, two weeks. I think uh, the weekend of August, the first weekend in August will be the first week we'll be busting this out. So 
That's all we got, guys. Thank you for watching. Till next time.